Welcome to the Center for Student Learning Study Skills Workshop, Train Your Brain. My name is Melissa Hortman and I am the Study Skills Coordinator in the Center for Student Learning and I will be speaking today for this presentation. In this presentation we will discuss different ways of training your brain to make it do what you want it to do, be efficient, make connections, remember more, be focused, and be healthier. This presentation is great for those who want to train their brain to maximize its retention and capacity as to be prepared for the stressful times in the semester. We talk about training your brain to maximize its retention and capacity because most people are using less than 2% of their total brain capacity. So what do you think you are doing with the other 98%? Training your brain may take a while to do. Just as in this quote from Will Rogers, you know you've got to exercise your brain just like your muscles. Training your brain is like working out your muscles to gain strength. You must condition and have long-term dedication to making it happen, but in the end, you'll be much stronger because of it. Know that these are not going to be quick fixes, but ideas on how you can train your brain to do the things you want it to do over time. The first section is training your brain to do what you want it to do, and there are three main points in which you can accomplish this. The first is clearing your mind by decluttering your life. This may not be true for everyone, but most everyone's brain capacity is impacted by physical clutter in their life. By doing this simple task, you can help your brain think clearer and in turn do what you want it to do. You can also conquer procrastination habits by implementing rituals in your life, such as saving Netflix until you have finished studying a certain amount of information. This way you are making the distractions that may impact your motivation and focus the reward for pushing through and finishing your goals and studying. This actually puts things that were a distraction out of your head during the times when you need to be focusing and can enjoy them more in the end. The last is using music and movement to impact your thoughts and motivation, which we will look at more in the next slide. Did you know that music and movement can impact your thoughts? Well, it can. There are many studies focusing on how music can impact your mood. Do you notice when you are studying that if you listen to a certain type of music, you may work faster or slower? Music is a great tool to make you, your brain do what you want it to do. However, it may take some tries to find what kind of music impacts you in different ways. Also know that movement can impact your thought. Again, there are many studies focusing on how walking briskly or running can impact your mood. We can really train our brains to feel a certain way or to do what we want, which in turn can impact focus and retention when studying. The next section is to train your brain to be more efficient. The first point is if you want your brain to be more efficient, you should change your focus when studying. This can be useful for when there isn't enough time to take a long break while studying. Try alternating between technical and non-technical subjects to change your focus and help your brain be more efficient during crunch times. Another thing you could try is to change your approach. If one learning style isn't working, switch to another and it in turn can help you shake up your studying to be more efficient in your learning. The last point to training your brain to be more efficient is to take a break when studying, which gives your mind time to relax and absorb information. On the next slide, we will see more information on this top. Here we see that as you study over time, your recall dips down until you take a break and then it comes back up. Taking a break gives your mind that time away from the material for you to de-stress as well as allow time for your brain to actually absorb the information. A break should be a short amount of time, from 5 to 30 minutes, to be sure you don't prolong your break and allow procrastination to creep in. Look at more of the CSL's videos and handouts that could aid in structuring this break for you. The best way to start adding in this break is by using the study power hour. The next section is to train your brain to make 
connections. The first point in this section is to cross-pollinate your interests, such as if you are interested in running, you can watch a TED Talk on it and do research on training, while you can also apply it to what you might be learning in your exercise science course. Neurons that connect to existing neurons give you new perspective and abilities to use additional knowledge in new ways. You can do this by relating what you are learning to previous knowledge, which leads to the next point. You can learn how to critically think to make connections of new information to previous knowledge to be able to retain more of it. The last point is to think holistically, which might be the single most advanced learning technique that would help students. We will look at this more in the next slide. Here we find a triangle of amounts of material we can retain by learning in different ways. This is a holistic way of looking at material by integrating all of your senses in learning. As you see, you cannot just read, hear, or see information to retain it. You must do more with it. This is where you can find holistic ways of learning and ultimately retain material. You see in the triangle that you can retain 95% of the material through teaching someone else. All senses are involved when doing this. Try to challenge yourself to learn holistically by making connections and using all of your senses to learn. The next section looks at how to train your brain to remember more. The first point is by working your memory. This can relate to the beginning of this presentation as we talked about working out your brain as if you were working out a muscle. This is similar to utilizing memory activities that engage all levels of brain operation, receiving, remembering, and thinking. Help to improve the function of your brain. We will look at some of these activities you can find around your house and on your phone later this presentation. The next point is to learn a new skill. When was the last time you learned a new skill? Was it difficult? Although it may have been difficult, you will find that any time you're learning one thing, your brain is becoming better at learning everything. The last point is to write out your notes. The brain is proven to be more attentive when writing, which helps you engage in all levels of brain operation again. These points may take longer to implement and train your brain as each of these skills is more advanced and more time consuming to place effort in. The next section is to train your brain to be more focused. When training your brain to be more focused, you can find that it is like working out. You have to build the muscle to be focused which needs time and effort to make it happen. This kind of workout can also be done when trying to overcome multitasking and learn to focus on one task at a time. You lose the ability to focus as distraction becomes a habit. This must be done because when multitasking is the norm, your brain quickly adapts so you need time to work out of that habit. You can train your brain to be more focused and overcome multitasking by practicing concentration. Turn off all distractions and commit your attention to a single task. Start small, maybe five minutes per day, and work up to larger chunks of time. If you find your mind wandering, just return to the task at hand. This small activity can help you train your brain to focus more intently and for longer periods of time. The next section is to train your brain to be healthy. Things like eating well, sleeping and exercise can impact your brain more than you know. But there are ways to train your brain in each of these areas so it is healthy. Foods like fish, fruits, dark chocolates, and vegetables help your brain perform optimally. Altering your food intake can truly impact your brain. Sleep is one of the most important aspects to keeping your brain healthy and functioning for those long and arduous study sessions. Losing one night of sleep can impair your reasoning for up to four days. This is one of the worst things you can do for yourself. Staying up can hurt you more than it can help you in the long run of learning. Even exercise can impact your brain's health. Even briefly exercising for 20 minutes facilitates information processing and memory function. You will learn faster, your alertness level will increase. 
These are very easy ways in which you can implement change in your life for a healthier and happier brain. Board games in which you need to think are actually great ways in which you can train your brain functioning. These are fun and easy ways to train your brain you should try. There are also a lot of apps you can download to train your brain. Be weary of time and effort placed into these games as they all claim to be the best. Be sure to do your research of which apps can truly help to train your brain. You can find more of these apps on the CSL's webpage in the Tools Not Toys and Tools Not Toys 2.0 slideshows. Although apps can be dicey, there are fun ways to train your brain in new and interesting ways. There's a lot of research out there on the topic of training your brain, so if you're interested in this topic, be sure to find those patterns that are emerging in this research. Brain training is effective whether designed as classic cognitive tasks, combined tasks, or video game. This is great to know because we all learn and train in different ways and they are all comparable. You can then choose a section of this presentation to focus on and train your brain in both classic and innovative ways. Huge point of this presentation is that effects are mostly restricted to the specific tasks being trained and do, so, do not significantly generalize to other tasks or cognitive functions. Be sure you are not wasting time and effort on games that may not be helping you with your whole brain and learning other things. There is some evidence that effects tend to be short-lived due to the way people are training their brains. The last point on this is that computer-based brain training does not appear to be significantly different in outcome from traditional pencil and paper-based training, but it is less labor-intensive. All in all, whether you choose classic or new computer training, it all has the same effect on your brain. I will leave you with five recommendations I have from this presentation. The first is that engaging in various types of cognitively demanding tasks is a good thing. You should feel mentally exhausted after training your brain. It is like a workout to get fit. The second is to try to engage in novel and various different types of tasks. And keep in mind that these do not always have to be computer based. When you are challenging your brain and learning new things, you are constantly improving and growing to be better. The third is to find games that you generally find fun because making it a chore and overdoing it can turn training your brain into a daunting task. The fourth is to not spend a lot of money on fancy brain training programs with dramatic claims. Although they may be fun, again, they are giving you games that you may be getting better at, but it is just the game or specific task in which you are improving. The last point is to not believe all the hype. Training your brain can become a very structured and large task. However, it is really the specific task and way in which you want your brain to do it that matters. Remember to always trust your brain while training it. That concludes the Train Your Brain workshop. If you have any further questions about this workshop or the content, please come to or contact the Center for Student Learning at 843-953-5635. We are located on the first floor of the Adelstone Library off of Calhoun Street and are also mobile at csl.cfc.edu. Please take a look at our other videos available for other topics and handouts as a resource. We hope to see you in the CSL soon.